It's not often a cyclist survives a crash as serious as this. Shocked? You shouldn't be. Just another day in the saddle. Or on a car bonnet. Or splayed on the asphalt. There is the usual excuse. I didn't actually see you, so I, 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 I apologise, I've done wrong. And sometimes the fisticuffs. The driver of this white van didn't even go to court for this assault. He was let off with a police caution. It was filmed by Dave Sherry, professional bus driver, committed cyclist, and self-styled vigilante of the roads. He took me for a quick ride. It wasn't long before he was cut up. Cameras on Dave's person point every which way. His footage has helped convict dozens of dangerous drivers. I'm trying to make a difference. I'm bringing the bad drivers to account, and sometimes there will be hostility, threatening behaviour, you know the sorts. But at the end of the day, I'm trying to make a stand. No retreat, no surrender. Statistics suggest nationwide cycling isn't getting safer, it's getting more dangerous. Since the Olympics, bike use in the UK has soared, but even professional racers feel nervous on the road. I have felt unsafe at times. I mean, I've been hit a few times, um, but I guess for me it's just one of those things because I am a bike rider. I think for people who commute, it's a bit more scary. Snaking through the country's accident hotspots is not for the faint-hearted. Do you get scared riding on London's roads? A little bit, yeah, just use common sense. But, yeah. What scares you? Big trucks or people that don't know where they're going, so... Have you had any close calls? Uh, one or two, one or two. Elephant and Castle Roundabout in South London is one of the most dangerous, if not the most dangerous, roundabout in the country. There are no cycle lanes, let alone segregated ones. It is not a lot of fun. So how do we make the nation's roads safer, especially for would-be cyclists who are currently too scared? The new Infrastructure Act requires government to integrate cycling and walking with the wider transport network. The three main parties pledge differing amounts of money, the Lib Dems promising the most, while regionally London leads the way. The mayor's office is spending hundreds of millions on redesigned roundabouts and segregated cycle paths, and the long-term stats for the capital show that relative to the increased number of cycle journeys, here, deaths are on the way down. At the moment, almost a quarter of all traffic on the roads in the morning rush hour in central London is bikes. In terms of vehicle yeah, numbers? Yeah, 24% of vehicles on the roads in central London in the rush hour are bikes. And uh, they get nothing like 24% of the road space provision. But it's not just about changing the roads, it's about how we use them. In particular, heavy goods vehicles. In London, they make up just 4% of traffic, yet account for half of fatal accidents involving bikes. From the security of a cab, it is astonishing just how invisible bikes are. The haulage industry say they're introducing new full visibility cabs. And why blame drivers, they ask, when cyclists routinely flout traffic rules. My street. A long way down a one-way street, mounting the pavement. And no helmet, talking on a mobile phone round, yes, Elephant and Castle. It annoys me to a certain extent because it's like I'm trying to be aware of my surroundings. I'm trying to do my job as best as I can. Yeah. And a cyclist is, is not even paying any attention or they're not looking out for their own safety. If there is an accident or something, it's always look at the lorry driver first. And then there's traffic signals, Bow Roundabout, currently being redesigned for it is a notorious intersection. One morning three years ago, Brian Dawling, on his bike, chanced a red light, as did the driver of a tipper truck. Brian died at the scene. The driver received a suspended sentence. Brian went through a red light and that had all sorts of consequences for the, um, the court case and, you know, the final damages um, that, that uh, the, we, we got as a family. It's, it's, been, a, it's been a horrible time. And, uh, you know, cyclists, please, if you've got families, don't put, don't put yourself in a position whereby you could put your family in our position. Earlier this week, there was a die-in, a vigil, to remember another dead cyclist. 
mother of two, Claire Itier Abadi, the fourth this year killed by an HGV in the capital. Whatever the long-term trend, so far it's well above the monthly average. It is rare, rare indeed, for a collision that can send a bike 15 feet into the air to end in anything but serious injury or death. The cyclist who filmed this somehow landed on his feet and escaped with only bruising.